Hello and welcome to Accounting 101 Lesson 6, which is all about the trial balance. So what is a trial balance then? By now you've learned how to enter transactions into the T accounts, how to deal with sales purchases on either a, a credit or cash basis and deal with the um, bank transactions, cash transactions. So now what we need to move on to, having learned how to balance off the T accounts, is how we put together a trial balance. So the trial balance is prepared by taking the balance brought down from every single account in the ledger. So the ledger is like a folder that contains all the T accounts. The debit balances brought down, so at the start of the new month, not the ones carried down at the end of the old month, they go on the debit side of the trial balance and any credit balances brought down at the start of the new month go onto the credit side of the trial balance. When we've completed all that, we total up the debit column and the credit column and the totals in each column must be equal. And if they are, that proves that the arithmetic is correct, that for every debit, there is a credit. Doesn't mean though that absolutely everything is fine. Um, there can still be errors lurking within that trial balance. So you may have completely forgotten to post a transaction, or it may be that you've posted something for the wrong amount. If the debit and the credit are both wrong, your trial balance will still agree. The individual balances on the accounts will be wrong. So we'll look at how we can sort that out. So here's a little example, very small trial balance here. Um, and you can see we've got um, the account name down the, the side here. And then we've got a column for the debits and a column for the credits. So just I mean, as I said, a very simple example here. Um, the cash balance, we've got £145. If you remember, cash is an asset, so that will always be on the debit side. Sales revenue is a source of income, so that's going to be on the credit side. Expenses, so expenses that are paid out are going to be on the debit side. So if you're using dead click or dear clip, E is always going to be in the, uh, the dead or the dear, depending on which mnemonic you're using. Bank overdraft, it's an overdraft, so there's a negative balance on the bank account. It's a liability, so that's in there on the credit side. And this business has got assets of £900 on the debit side. Um, and payables, trade payables, a liability, £387 on the credit side. So you can see that if we add up all of the debits, £1,201 there, add up all of the credits, £1,201 there. So the debits and the credits agree, it balances. So when we say trial balance, the word trial means a test. It's a test to see whether the debits and the credits are equal. Okay, if the two columns in the trial balance are not equal, that does, of course, indicate that there's been an error of some description. And that might either be in the double entry bookkeeping entries to the ledger. So you may have put a debit in on one account but forgotten to post the credit, or you might have posted two debits instead of a debit and a credit. Or there could have been an error in totaling the trial balance. So you might actually have a problem here with the addition um, of the trial balance itself. There could also be a problem with the addition within the individual T accounts. So this trial balance is going to be drawn up regularly, uh, could be on a monthly basis, at least once a year, at least annually, uh, by a business to check the accuracy of the ledger to make sure that the debits and the credits agree, and in order to prepare its final account. So by final accounts, we mean the income statement, which is also known as the profit and loss account, and we mean the statement of financial position, which is also known as the balance sheet. So the trial balance is the starting point both of those documents. If we don't have a trial balance that agrees, we are never going to get the financial statements to add up. So just a little reminder here about the debits and credits and why things are on a particular side. So if you need any guidance on this, check out my short videos um, on the Deer Clip mnemonic um, and the four rules of uh, double entry bookkeeping as well may also help. So cash is on the debit side because it's a current asset. Assets are always debits. Sales revenue and all types of other income are credits. Expenses, always debits. Bank balance could be a debit, could be a credit. In this case, it's an overdraft. So they've gone into a negative balance, um, which means that they are in debt to the bank. It's a liability, it's money owed to the bank. So that's on the credit side. Um, and then assets here, 900 pounds, that could be a non-current asset. Or it could be something like inventory. Assets are always on the debit side and trade payables, their liabilities, amounts that the business owes to its suppliers. So they're always gonna be on the credit side. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can prepare one. There's a little activity that you can take part in here. So we've got someone called Tony and we're gonna be preparing his trial balance for the year ended 31st of December, 2013. 
Um, he's got some debit balances, he's got some credit balances, and we need to sort out which are which. So if you remember that debit balances are assets and expenses, also trade receivables and drawings would be on the debit side. Um, credit balances comprise liabilities, income and capital. Remember that under liabilities, we've also got trade payables. So Tony owns some office buildings worth £210,000. He's got a delivery van worth £17,000. Um, he's paid out motor tax of £200. He's paid out insurance of £750. He's paid out for rates. So that's like a, a tax that's paid to the local council, £3,000. Trade receivables are £7,400. Trade payables, £4,100. Sales revenue was £324,000. Purchases were £157,000. Capital was £100,000 and cash was 32,750. So using those figures, can I suggest that you pause the video now um, and have a go at preparing a trial balance, remembering your, your dear clip or your dead click and see if you can get it to agree. If you've done it correctly, I promise you it should. So pause the video, have a go, and then we'll come back for the answers in just a moment. So hopefully you've had a go at the trial balance and you've managed to get it to agree. So I've prepared one here earlier and if you've done it correctly you should find that the debits and the credits both equal £428,100. If they didn't it's possibly because you've missed something out from the list up here or it could be that you've put something on the wrong side. So just to recap then office buildings are an asset so is the delivery van that's why they're on the debit side. The motor tax is an expense running cost might be known as road fund license. Insurance also a running cost and expense and so is rates. So all of those are on the debit side of the trial balance. Trade receivables, money owed to the business by its customers. They're a type of asset, so they're on the debit side. Whereas trade payables, the liability, money owed to suppliers is on the credit side. The sales revenue there on the credit side because it's income. Purchases are a type of expense. They're on the debit side. Capital is the money invested in the business by the owner. So we've got £100,000 there on the credit side. And then cash, we've got 32750 which is always going to be an asset. So cash can never be overdrawn, unlike the bank account. So if you've done it right, as I said, you should have ended up with 428100 If you didn't, perhaps um, pause the video again, rewind a bit so you can't see the answer, um, and give it another go. Okay, so don't panic if your trial balance doesn't add up. So one of the big skills we need to learn um, in all things to do with accounting is a little bit of resilience. Things don't always go to plan. So if your two columns do not add up, don't panic, but just have a little check through the following. So we've got some ideas here of things that you can check on. First of all, check that the addition in both columns of the trial balance is correct. So just go back, add up your debits, add up your credits and make sure that that is correct. Generally, you're going to find that there are usually more debit entries than credit entries. That's because of the number of expenses that most businesses have. So just have a little look at your trial balance. Make sure you've got more things on the debit side than the credit side. It may present an obvious answer. Um, you know, go back and check, make sure nothing's on the wrong side. If your debit total is smaller than the credit total, check that you haven't missed out a debit entry. Have you got the bank in there? Have you got the cash in there? Are purchases in there? Just make sure that you haven't missed anything out and vice versa. So if your credit total is smaller than your debit total, make sure that you haven't missed out a credit entry. If it's a large amount, it could be something like sales, um, for example, that you've missed out. So just make sure that you've included everything for which there's a T account. Um, you can have a go at dividing the difference by two and then see if there's an entry for that amount, um, which could be in the wrong column. So when you put something into the wrong column, you end up twice that amount out. So if you think about if you've missed out £100 um, of an expense, if it's gone into the credit column rather than the debit column, the debit column is missing 100 and the credit column has gained 100 that shouldn't be there. So the overall difference is £200. So um, that's why we say divide the difference by two and see if you can find an entry for that amount and then just check whether or not it's in the right column. If the difference is divisible by nine, this is another really useful trick, there may be a transposition error. So you may have written some numbers down around the wrong way. So you might have written, for example, here 75 as 57 or 7,500 as 5,700. It doesn't matter where in the number sequence, as long as they're two 
um, adjacent numbers, if you've twisted them round, then you will end up with a difference that's divisible by nine. So your difference might be nine, it might be 36, it might be 4,500 um, or four and a half million. If it's divisible by nine, that's probably what has happened. So some handy tips there. So remember that practice makes perfect. You need to keep practicing your skills, practice your double entry, practice assembling a trial balance. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. Thanks very much for watching.